across the morning. This is Talk 100.3. 11 on 2 away. Good morning. This is Ronit Koteja on Live Talk and you're tuned into Talk 100.3. And one of the things that I'm actually quite excited about is this news report that has come in. That Sunday se, uh, heavy rains, thunderstorms, unstable weather can come back. I know it brings a lot of uh, inconvenience as well, but this is weather and it's nature and you can't do much about it. So what you can do is enjoy it with uh, some chai pakodas and all the regular stuff that we desis do. Um, and if you have a nice house which has a good balcony and a view, unrestricted winds, then you can also enjoy that and save on your electricity bills. So this is the uh, report that has come in uh, in WAM, which is the uh, news agency, the official news agency of the UAE. Uh, the Met Department has indeed anticipated a change in the weather conditions as deepening upper air trough brings uh, weather uh, scattered showers and strong winds. So brace yourself. Ye weekend be shayad uh, bohat Mumbai wala weekend ho sakta hai. And talking of Mumbai, we have someone with us who is from Mumbai, my town, my city. Um, Dr. Pooja Jaisal, she is the OBGYN uh, and uh, we're talking about something very important today. So, uh, Dr. Firstly, a very warm welcome to you, Ramadan Kareem. How are you doing? Thank you so much and Ramadan Kareem to you and all the listeners out there. I'm so glad that, you know, Mumbai Connect, Mumbai ka naam sun ke ek dem maza a jata. Smile a jati hai face yeah. pe. Aur uh, aaj kal jo mausam weekend to weekend ho raha hai Mumbai wala. Yeah. I must tell you this, so last Saturday, jis sab hua tha when we uh, experienced a lot of showers and all that. I had gone uh, to interview uh, Vashu Bagnani. Wow. He is one of those big filmmakers, right? Abhi bade miya, chote miya jo aane wali hai. So, uh, he uh, was at his hotel and he was at Sheikh Zayed Road, I think Voko Hotel. So, he said, I, I woke up and I opened the, uh, like, uh, somebody called him. He said, open the drapes and see what you can see outside. And he said, I opened the drapes and I couldn't believe that I'm in Dubai. I was like, I'm Mumbai. Jaisa lag raha tha. And that's exactly what my feeling was because when I drove all the way from my house till the hotel, it was magical weather. I mean, I wouldn't have ventured out if he wasn't flying that evening and I had to do the interview. But it was a lot of fun. It was adventure. Bhi hua. How nice. But I wouldn't <laughs> recommend that and advise people to do that. Stay indoors if it's raining. Yeah, you can enjoy the weather from within your house balcony as well. Right, so talking about, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, your field and, you know, what you do. So, um, a lot of times, you know, family planning, uh, you know, safe intercourses, all of these things are, there's a lot of unawareness about that and people tend to brush that topic. Uh, so, you know, firstly, I want to ask you, what are the kind of uh, problems uh, people come to you with? So, um, I'm practicing as a specialist ob for uh, last 20 years. I'm practicing now in uh, Faki University Hospital. Okay. And I keep getting uh, these queries from women and, uh, you know, they can be uh, before uh, uh, setting down. They're just like uh, newly married. And some of them are already had a pregnancy and then they're looking for some spacing method. Or there are people who have achieved their uh, goals, like the family goals, that they have and now give us uh, something good for long term. So, you know, it's different based on your... Uh, uh, your goals that you're looking at. Someone who's newly married and who's want to build up uh, that uh, uh, that bond and still not decided that we want to get into the next phase of life of a family or all. So, you know, uh, each person we personalize. We personalize, we see and based on what their needs are and also very important is their health condition. What are their risk factors? And uh, uh, I tell you that it's all about preventive. If you have a preventive health, that's the magical pillar or or you could say that uh, you have everything under your control. If you land up with an unwanted pregnancy and uh, then you're all screwed up, you like <laughs> what to do next and then they come to you and we are ob gyne So then if you manage a, a high-risk pregnancy, uh, it's always better to plan it, to make sure that you're in the best of the health, to know that what you when do you want to start a pregnancy. So those are the concerns that we usually get. So when people say family planning, hmm. do you think they actually understand what it means or would you like to tell us what exactly it is? So family planning technically if you want to say medically or scientifically is a method of uh, interrupting pregnancy like avoiding an unwanted pregnancy so it's a natural thing it's 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 by nature so uh, when you are in a, a, a committed relationship and uh, people are physically intimate 
um, and especially if you are ovulating at that time, if you have an unprotected intercourse, you can land up with a pregnancy. So, uh, sensibly speaking, if you're not really prepared for uh, uh, responsibility like that, you should you should practice some method of birth control, and that is what is family planning. Okay, it's not about actually that we're going to be having two children or three children through the next 10 years. It's not that. It's actually avoiding the unwanted pregnancy. It is that and it is also what you said, like, you know, also birth spacing and knowing that when you want to have your next child. So it's also about achieving the first pregnancy, avoiding it till such time that you are fully prepared. Secondly, also spacing that between the first pregnancy and the second pregnancy, maybe you've had some complications. Maybe you had a cesarean section. So that's the ideal time would be, uh, uh, you know, you need to keep a gap. How much gap for which person and then uh, how what is your age and how much is your fertility potential right. you should not keep on waiting endlessly till such time that you know your fertility p- potential is very low and then then when you plan then you see that uh, it's so difficult arise, yeah. it's so difficult to achieve but uh, as a doctor what's an ideal space between two children or uh, between two plannings so ideally, we do say that a gap of two to three years is, uh, that is the traditional, that is it's, the traditional knowledge. But it's also ideal, is it? No. So that's what I'm saying. I'm here to talk about advanced things and newer things. Absolutely. So newer yes. contraception means it's like we are now modern women. Most of these women who come to me are also uh, professionally qualified and they are into their thing. Ambitious. And ambitious. They have their careers. They don't want to have a sabbatical. So, and if you have had a previous pregnancy, which has had complications, and you know that you can have problems conceiving you need not wait you can plan your pregnancy immediately and say for example if you're having an elective uh, thing you can have a shorter gap so when we when we have a long gap uh, we are like we're, we're allowing time to heal like when you want to have a vaginal delivery or specifically you're looking at some uh, thing okay so you can have an immediate uh, pregnancy no worries within about a year that. you're saying like within, within a year a... within a few months also some people can have an abortion and then they say that doctor somebody has told me that i have to mandatorily wait for six months before i conceive again what's it's the law on abortion uh, over here is it uh... so in uae we are very very conservative about and we don't like so the best way is to avoid a pregnancy because if you uh, conceive and if you have a pregnancy which is not something that you're ready for you cannot uh, you cannot not abort. Okay. So, so you uh, you have to be careful. You have to be careful because that's a responsibility and I think that's good that you should be watchful. Okay. All right. So now that we've established the topic, uh, we'll open the phone lines uh, and the WhatsApp lines. If you want to join in the discussion, if you have uh, any issues that you're facing with birth control or uh, family planning, 0586-861003 is the number to WhatsApp or if you want to call and talk to us, 8008-1003. Uh, Dr. Jaisal is going to be with us for some more time. Stick around. Life Talk 100.3. Eleven fourteen. A very good morning. This is Ronak Kudeja on Life Talk, and with me is uh, Pooja Jaisal. She is an OBGYN with Faki uh, University Hospital, and uh, we're talking about uh, family planning. Now, one of the things, one of the trends that we've seen rather is that couples either delaying pregnancies or not have opting to not have a child at all. Do you see or not? Have, opting to not have a child at all. Do you see this as a trend even here and uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, so you have really pointed out these are some of the trends that are happening in the new millennium. So we are getting millennial couples, both are ambitious and they have their career goals and most of them, some of them, I I. I have encountered and I have experienced, they come to me and they say, doctor, we have consciously decided either to not have a a baby for so long till we achieve this, or some of them even have decided that, you know, this is our decision that we don't want to have a child. So uh, in that situation, uh, for me as a healthcare provider, we respect everybody's decision because we are individuals over here. And for me, it is really very important to offer her all the contraceptive choices, as well as giving her a good awareness about what to expect what not to expect and sometimes they may be having certain myths which makes them you know reach a conclusion like this or take a decision like this so I go into the depths I go into the history ask them what has made them come to a decision like this and if it is something which is because of a myth or because of uh, some uh, uh, misinformation then I do clear those doubts and if they are very firm that yeah they want to do this I explain them what is best at that because we have long term methods we have reversible methods we have irreversible methods 
methods. So there are methods which are suitable for a couple, and there are methods where you know the male uh, uh, of the the male pa- partner, yeah. yeah, he can go for a contraception rather than the female going uh, ahead with it, or both of them, or you know they want it momentarily, or they want it you know at this point of time they are in a frame of mind where they have taken the decision. I tell them you know take this which is a temporary method, and then you can come back for a permanent one. So we do have all these options available. Okay, but. Uh, do you see there's a lot of misinformation and uh, there's there a lot of myths around uh, family planning, pregnancy as such, which is uh, also makes your job that much more crucial and maybe even harder? Of course, of course. Uh, contraception is uh, full of all these myths, especially the, the women are very conscious about their weight. And they come to me and they say, Doctor, I don't want this method because I've heard that, you know, you put on a lot of weight. So uh, we have so many different methods of contraception. The traditional one is basically you have two female hormones, the estrogen and the progesterone. And those are the combined pills. So the newer methods are now focusing on reducing the ones which cause more risk factors. The estrogen component is coming down, the progesterone is getting better, newer, the synthetic ones. So all these, uh, they were, the side effects were there. They are the thing of the past. Now, if at all you gain weight, there are a lot of methods which uh, you will not uh, gain any weight, which is a prime concern among a lot of women. The risk factors, the ones which are that are really concerning is forming blood clots, like having uh, clots in your brain or in the legs and all. Some people who have liver diseases, some people who have, uh, you know, medical conditions like blood pressure, diabetes. So somebody who has cancer in the family. So we need to elicit these risk factors within their family and give them the choice. So we have very good good ones there are pills which are uh, which can be taken every day and there are things which you don't need to take every day there are newer ones like you can just go for an implant and that implant is maybe the size of a mac- matchstick okay it's like okay. a single rod and you can put it very discreetly under the skin there's no chance of falling so uh, i wanted to before i go for what are the new methods is like people want to know what is an ideal contraceptive Ideal contraceptive is one where you don't have to take it repeatedly, where it has least amount of side effects, cost is important, it is reversible, it is uh, uh, not dependent on the user. So, you know, we we see all those things and we have a lot of newer contraceptives in the form of vaginal rings, uh, implants, which I told you can put it under the skin and it will not be visible. There are patches because there are women who forget taking pills. So you can put a patch on your back or on the belly or uh, on the trunk. And then once a week, you just remove the patch and repeat the patch again. Three weeks you take and one week uh, you, you, you put it off. And that is the time when you'll get your periods. Similarly, there are devices. So these are more long acting ones. But they don't have any side effects so uh, there are side effects but the side effects are you have to see the risk and the benefit as always yeah Yeah, so if the benefits are far exceeding the side effects I think it is a little amount of side effect like a dizziness or a nausea or something and that also the side effects they go on reducing with usage so Mm. in the beginning maybe you may get and that depends upon what method you're using right so it's not something not manageable is any of this covered under insurance Oh, that's a very brilliant question because this is what is one of the factors which is uh, uh, comes in the way of uh, usage or propagation. Or when we say they say, doctor, please write me something which covers which is covered under insurance. Unfortunately, it's not, including even um, uh, family planning sterilizations. So you can't uh, get it covered. None under, of these are covered. None of these are covered, and it is not even approved. And uh, we we can we can um, she has to take it uh, purchase it purchase it on their own yeah all right also uh, one thing that we've seen often is uh, w- women you know uh, being scared about the fact that after a point they will not be able to conceive and uh, you know they might miss the bus altogether so how late is too late. <laughs> How late is too late is a very difficult and, you know, intriguing individual question. question. It's an individual question. But yeah, after the age of 40, to give you a rough idea. So uh, after the age of 35, the egg quality, the quality of the egg starts. Uh, we have a women have a biological clock. So if you have a goal, it is always better to not delay this uh, uh, family, uh, this thing on time. You know, just, just at least have one baby. Because after 35, what happens is the um, ovaries, they have a reserve. They have a set number number of eggs and with each cycle you're losing one egg so even if you are eating right exercising all of that 
yeah eating right it. exercising and all can you know your body may be the age may be 35 but your body you may maintain it in your 20s so that's exercise and diet and proper sleep and all does help you keep it healthy but then we have a solution medically we can have the possibility of freezing your eggs so if you have for some reason not ready for a pregnancy now what you can do is you can take your healthy eggs we retrieve the eggs we freeze it for future embryo and embryo transfer whenever you think that yeah, you have those right. are very expensive methods right those are expensive but they are not uh, impossible and i do get a lot of patients who do this it's a real thing it's not something that we just read okay and finally one of the questions that also comes in um, you know is when a child comes in there are a lot of expenses involved so as an obgyn uh, do you think that is also a myth or is it really very expensive to once you have a child then you know how a, life it's, changes it's a real financially thing. for for majority i would say for majority who would lie in this bracket where uh, they need to plan their expenses around how many children because of course it's a real thing getting into schools giving them good education also well, it starts right from the pregnancy it starts from pregnancy it goes on and then every year you have to renew their uh, insurance medical insurance <laughs> <laughs> so everything and kids you never know they play they hurt themselves they can have so all sorts of things so yeah this can be a big big uh, reason deciding factor yeah by people do not want to go for more uh, kids these days but uh, but uh, yeah planning planning ahead planning goes right. a long way okay and finally if i were to ask you about the ideal health condition uh, of a father and mother during pregnancy what would it be so um ideal health condition would be something that you first is your bmi that is your uh, that is your body mass index which depends a lot on your uh, weight so a weight should be a body mass index of around less than 24 that means you are optimum for your weight and you you do have some muscle mass you eat healthy and uh, you have to check your uh, uh, routine um, uh, parameters like your hemoglobin for women they should not be anemic they not be iron deficiency we see a lot of women in here in uae they are deficient in vitamin d you have to get your sugars under control hormonal factors a lot of them have thyroid deficiencies so these are very easily picked up if you just go for a annual checkup you will know that these are some of the basic things because they will impact and a very important factor is addictions smoking is a big no both for the uh, father as well as for the mother while they are pregnant even when they are pregnant of course even before not, even when they are not but it it, it kind of adds more problems uh, when to you're the trying baby, to get to the baby also. and also to the quality of the embryo and the quality of the uh, pregnancy that you're having all right okay great thank you so much uh, doctor uh, for sharing those insights with us and uh, Yeah, we hope you have a great. Uh, it was ahead. wonderful, Rana. It was very nice to be here, and thank you for inviting me. You're most welcome, doctor.